Welcome back to First Line. It's time for our weekly science chat and today we're focusing on human evolution. Evidence published this week suggests we inherited susceptibility to type 2 diabetes and other diseases from Neanderthal ancestors. So what is the significance of this discovery? AUT science professor Steve Pont pointing is here to tell us. Good morning. How did researchers make this discovery? Oh, morning Sasha. Morning Mike. Um, this discovery really came about from a from a, a massive leap forward in our understanding of genomes and that is the DNA that encodes everything that we are basically and uh, as many people know about 10 years ago we sequenced the human genome but late last year we also managed to unravel and sequence the Neanderthal genome and Neanderthals are a sort of distant, a distant ancestor or cousin of ours if you like and of course now that we have both genomes we can do comparative studies and uh, the news the big news late last year was that up to two percent of human DNA, uh, or Homo sapien DNA, is in fact Neanderthal in origin. Um, but now, and especially in the last week, we've had a flurry of research publications that are showing just what the functions of that 2% of DNA are. And so that's telling us not only what contributions to our modern selves Neanderthal DNA makes, but also what contributions are not made by Neanderthal. That is what things are uniquely human. So both, both, both those things are very exciting. And what does it mean for our understanding of diabetes? Right, well, um, perhaps we, we, we'll, we'll take a step back to, to understand some of the traits that we inherited from Neanderthals are, are kind of understandable. Um, so, for example, the genes that encode keratin, which is the building block of hair, or thick, luxurious hair growth in particular, on Neanderthal. But other genes, as you correctly point out, for diabetes, Crohn's disease, lupus, and other quite chronic diseases in humans also have Neanderthal origins. And this is really unexplainable at this point in time. Um, but what it does mean is that we can start to un understand the history of where these diseases were acquired. What are the benefits of it? Um, well, the benefits of the study in, in, in total are that we can better understand our, our, our roots, our, our origins, if you like. So they're, they're really quite, uh, you know, quite philosophical um, benefits. But of course, there are, there are more tangible benefits. And we already know that the, the, the huge advances in medicine that have come from understanding genomes. But what we're now also starting to see is benefits to forensics. And one particular example, which is, which is really interesting, is that uh, a, a new diagnostic test has been developed where we can actually understand eye colour and hair colour of individuals long dead. Um, and in particular, um, one study released this week managed to unravel that Benedictine monks, for example, were brown-eyed and dark-haired, um, that General Sikorsky, a very camera-shy general of World War II, who was postulated he was a, a, a very Aryan, blonde-haired, blue-eyed chap, um, this was proved by this method. So yeah, there, there, there are pro proper, proper benefits to this too. Now looking at a favourite subject of all of us, I'm sure, tooth decay. Oh, I went to the dentist the other day and it's cost me a thousand bucks or so. Uh, the origins of tooth decay, uh, now hunter, the hunter-gatherers apparently had tooth decay and this goes against uh, the, the perceived wisdom. Oh, absolutely. I mean, this, this makes all of us cringe, I think, whenever we think about it. Um, yeah, to, absolutely right. Tooth decay has long been perceived to have been uh, something that became widespread in, in modern humans as we developed an agrarian society. And the reason for that is that as we started to cultivate grains that were rich in carbohydrates, these carbohydrates turned to sugars that were fermented in our mouths and these fed the bacteria that caused tooth decay. Um, but this discovery is, is really good old fashioned archaeology. It's almost the flip side of the genetics that we've just been discussing. And really what we're seeing is that um, the evidence from uh, from teeth and from food and associated items is showing that, that hunter-gatherers actually had a strong preference for food. And in this particular study, which, which um, was in Europe, the hunter-gatherers loved to eat acorns and pine nuts, um, and really not much else. And associated with the acorn and pine nut remnants were also stones that were strongly associated with grinding. And so what we think was the case was that flowers or even porridges were being manufactured from these acorns and pine nuts and forming carbohydrate-rich foods. Hence tooth decay and hunter-gatherers. Oh yeah, So it's just as depressing then with tooth decay. Yeah. Thank you very much for coming in, Steve Pointing. My pleasure. Thanks.